I think all these lockdowns and lack of flying events is really getting to me now. I only planned on swapping the fuel tank in my Lizard and in the process went all lightheaded. I ended up putting into action a lot of the cool techniques learnt from the Germans Ralph and Enrico at Team Elsterjet, turning my Lizard into an absolute featherweight, dropping about one kilo from this six kilo all up airframe. But that's not possible though, right? That's too much. At least not without removing something huge like, I don't know, the turbine. Well, this aside, when I started this project, I hadn't planned on any of this. So unfortunately, I didn't weigh the model before making any changes. But we can weigh all the stuff that we took out and replaced so we can figure out roughly what it is as we go along. Let's have a look. Fuel tanks are what initiated all of this, so let's start there. The original SAB fuel tank is great. However, for my particular power choice, the JetCat P130RX, which provides astronomical power, flight times weren't as long as I would like. So I needed more fuel on board. The solution was speaking with Carlos at CM Jets. He was good enough to make a custom fuel tank for me that would sit on top of this one while still fitting under the canopy. That provided the extra flight time that I wanted and needed. However, it wasn't particularly weight efficient. So I spoke with Carlos again, and we came up with a new single piece fuel tank to replace the original, but that still has that extra capacity. Now at the same time, I challenged Carlos to beat the original weight. Challenger accepted. So, we have the original fuel tank at 140 grams, roughly. And Carlos, moment of truth, about 115. Yes! Great job. <laughs> Moving on. The plane already has vector thrust on rudder, so strictly speaking, it doesn't need mobile rudders. You can see where I'm going. We're getting rid of both servos. So we're fixing the rudder in place, just a little bit of balsa stuck in the top there with a drop or two of Sino. And then we're removing the servo entirely. So we're getting rid of the servo, the heavy composite plate, the servo arm, the push rod, the ball links, all the wires and linkages, the lot. That weighs about 45 grams. And we're replacing it with a brand new plate made out of simple lightweight composite painted the same colour as the model, which weighs, well, according to the scales, nothing. So we've gone from 45 to nothing, and we've got that twice, because of course there were two rudders. So that's 90 grams we've knocked off right there from the tail. Oh yeah, plus a little bit more as I've also dremeled out all the reinforcements in here as well. We don't need that. This one's a big one. We're taking a leaf out of the J10 book and we're replacing the typical turbine wheels with its heavy hard rubber and aluminium along with electric brakes for some very simple plastic and foam wheels. The difference in weight, well, the turbine ones are just shy of 80 grams the new lightweight foam wheels, seven, eight grams. So a huge weight saving there. And of course, we have two of those, plus a heavy nose wheel, which we're also replacing with a slightly sturdier wheel, as this time for steering, we do want it to have a little bit more consistency, but we still have just shy of 40 grams on the original and 12 on the replacement. So we have some big, big savings here. But that's not it. We've done away with the electric brakes. That means that we can do away with everything that's connected to the electric brakes. So all the wires that control them, they're gone. The controller itself, that fits inside of an aluminium box, which we don't need. We only really need the actual board itself that controls the retracts. So the aluminium case, that's all gone as well. 
And upon dismantling the case, I discovered that there are actually two boards. One for the brakes, one for the retracts. So, the board that controls the brakes, that's gone as well. All in all, that's another 60 grams we've just saved. And we're getting into the debatably unnecessary weight savings now. But the cover that sits on top of the fuel tank, which unfortunately I already cut up before making the video, is kind of heavy as well if we're in this kind of mindset. So the original, along with all the parts, we're looking at about 65 grams. Now again, I've made a new version out of composite, painted to match the colour of the airplane, which on its own weighs 9 to 10 grams. Now, we are going to need to use the back part as that's what keeps the canopy in place, so that's why that's been cut up. And we're now looking at about 20 grams, but it's still quite an important saving when we start adding everything up. Time for a quick disclaimer. This next step, if done wrong, could be dangerous. So I'm doing it under my own responsibility. If you decide to try anything like this at home, do so under yours. The warranty will not cover you, and I'm not going to either. What I've done is I've opened up a lot of the holes a lot more than they were. Basically getting rid of excess wood, fiberglass, composite, glue, and paint. Now, this may seem over the top. It probably is. But if in doing so, I've been able to save 10, 15, 20 or 25 grams in the tail, you can double that amount in the front. So if it's 20 grams here, we've got 20 grams here, that's 40 grams that we've saved. Add that to the rudder servos that we've already removed and everything else that we've done, and it all adds up. That should allow us to use smaller batteries and get an even lighter all up weight. And with all that weight saved, it's time to get this thing put back together. So we're putting the new and lighter fuel tank in, securing it with that new lighter than ever reinforced top plate. We're attaching the wheels to the legs to the landing gear and screwing the turbine back into its definitive location. And we can go ahead and remove the excess nose weight that I had installed in here to my previous setup. So on the underside, I had six by four, five gram weights. So removing that, that's 120 grams right there. And a further three by four, five gram weights, adding up to a further 60. So in total, just from the nose lead, that's another 180 grams that we're taking off. And the final step is, of course, to check out the new CG. So we're going to be preparing everything as if it was ready to fly and then see what size batteries we need up front. With any luck, we can use some slightly smaller batteries and that can be our final weight savings. So for that new centre of gravity, we're going to be keeping the same main battery pack for the turbine which is an OptiPower 5000 milliamp 2S pack, but the two packs that power the power box, we can make them a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter. So we're replacing the 2150 milliamp packs for 1450 milliamp packs with about 120 grams versus 80 grams. So we're saving 40 grams per pack making a total final saving of another 80 grams. And there we have it, the final weight saving, 855 grams. That's absolutely huge. Now, okay, it may not be a whole kilo, but it's really close. And for a model this size and with this starting weight, that is an absolutely humongous weight saving. So I really, could not be happier and I cannot wait to get this thing back to the flying field and see the difference. If you can't wait either, make sure to like, subscribe for that next video and I'll see you all in the next one.